there, crafty friends. It's Diane, the Creative Inkster, and today is Wednesday, November 16th. The month is halfway over, if you can believe it. Oh, my goodness. It's flying by here, and here I am starting to think about Christmas shopping. I don't know about you, but it's going to get away from me. It always does. Not sure why December 25th comes every year at the same time. But here we are once again. I marvel at the people that start their shopping really early. One of my friends was saying she starts Boxing Day for the next year. I'm so impressed. On that note, let's just go crafting. It's What's Up Wednesday, and I'm going to share how to do this interesting technique where we get all these bubbles all over our vellum cardstock. So I want to show you how to do that. Before, though, I'm going to quickly jump in while we're gathering and show you some of the cards from my upcoming class. So for the first time in two and a half years, maybe more, um, I'm doing an in-person monthly card class. So you make four cards for $25, I'm sorry, eight cards for $25, two of each of these four designs. So here is a birthday card with some beautiful foil paper there. These two colors go so nicely together. Then a Christmas card, but not a traditional Christmas card. Hi, Vicki. This one is with yellows and greens. Really different. So what you're going to see is I got designing for this class and I got a lot of yellow happening here. So, um, And then this card with some lovely, and I think, I think I'm actually going to do a very similar one on a What's Up Wednesday, but this card's one we're going to make in that class using some of these beautiful, um, they don't come embossed, but we'll emboss them for the Canadian uh, Maple Leafs. And this cute one with the little Christmas Scotty dog. I love him. I think he's adorable. And so that's my four cards for December 13th. The class uh, is in person. I will do it as a kit to go. You'll have to provide your own stamps and inks. And of course, if you're coming to class, you'll also be providing your own adhesives. All right, let's get back to this card. If you're watching live like Vicki, let me know you're there. It's wonderful to have you uh, comment. And if you're watching the replay, I'm glad to know that you were watching that too. Love to interact with you. So this card is featuring a fish and a wish, which is a bundle right now. And we do have our sale on uh, November 15th to the 18th, where the stamp sets and stamp sets are a certain percentage off and the punches are a percentage off. They're 10%. No, I'm going to get that wrong. You just have to check the post. Some some things are 10%, some 15%, and some 20% off. I believe this actual stamp set and bundle may be on back order. But it doesn't mean you can't get it later. So it's really, really cute. All right. So we are going to start with the technique, though. So what you need for this are all these little supplies here. There's your card base which is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter and folded in the middle. So there's our, car, our card base being white. So it's just basic white. It would look really cool in a, in a colored cardstock as well or black. It would really have an interesting look, but I went with white. We need a piece of, of colored cardstock that matches the Stampin' Blends or alcohol-based markers that you're gonna use. So this is Highland Heather and uh, it measures four by five and a quarter. That's just going to be going our layer going on there. We'll get to that. We need a piece of white cardstock that's three and a half by four and sorry, let's get that right. Three and a half that right. Three and a half by four and a half. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. This is just um, a piece uh, to do our stamping out of out of this. Sorry for our little fishies. I'm like, why does it have such a weird measurement? And then we're going to use some vellum. Now, this vellum is three and three quarters by five. We have a vellum uh, card pack with some printed uh, colors on them, like sort of a grayish black and some plain pages or just plain old vellum. This is a little bit thinner than our vellum card stock, but it's going to work perfectly for this technique. And I've got a piece of adhesive sheet. This is just so that I can glue my vellum down without showing a lot of the adhesive behind. In fact, it won't show any because it will hide all of that. So it's a great way to get your vellum in place without showing. It is just slightly smaller <coughs> pardon me, than 
the vellum which is three and three quarters by five it's like just a hair smaller and the reason I do that is so that when I go to put it down I don't have any excess sticking out that's kind of on the edges so I just cut it just a small bit smaller and then I ended up pre-cutting a couple of labels in case one of them is a goof up so those we, we can do afterwards all right let's do the technique uh, I'm not going to put it on the adhesive sheet yet. I'm just going to work on the vellum. So I think I'll grab, just for safety sake, my um, craft mat here to work on. Plus, you can see the vellum way better. All right, so I've chosen three colors of Stampin' Blends. You can do this in any color. Um, this is Light Highland Heather and Dark light fresh freesia and dark and light and dark orchid oasis so we're going to go with the lightest one here and i'm going to go light light sorry light dark light dark light dark of the three colors so starting with fresh freesia i've got them out of order there's my helen tether there's my fresh freesia okay i'm just going to set these up for success here and we're going to just take the brush end in a usable fashion here and we're just going to color just going to add some color you can it doesn't have to be even we're going to do stripes and every color that you use is going to turn out make this turn out just a little bit different and you can overlap them a bit if you like or not i'm kind of somewhat evenly making six strips probably isn't going to turn out too evenly yet because you know it's crafting and it's not perfect and that's okay it doesn't have to be perfect so that was Highland Heather, now the dark Highland Heather. I'm just getting progressively darker. And then you could trim this down too if you wanted to. Entirely up to you. It is your creation, so you do how you'd like it done. I was saying that a lot last night, you do you, because I had my sorority sisters over to do some card making with me which we haven't done in a while in person and I'm going to share those cards with you I don't think I did there's similar ones to what I did with another group all right so I don't need that anymore here we go so there's my piece that I've gone ahead and added layers of color on and now we're going to work on the splotches I'll actually bring in some paper towel to stick underneath just in case it I get a little carried away with my splotching. So to do the splotching, I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol. This is 99%. Uh, you can use whatever you like. I'm going to pour some into the lid, just like that, and set that aside off camera. And then I have one of our water painters. You could use a regular paintbrush that I have a, a label on here that says alcohol because I do use alcohol in the barrel of it from time to time. It doesn't have anything in it, I don't think, right now. Um, and I'm just going to splatter this. So I'm using my... There's a couple different ways to do this. You, it does dry quickly, so you've got to move quickly if you're using a really high concentration of rubbing alcohol like at 99% here and I'm just tapping it on here so that I'm not getting sort of um, uniform looking splotches the other way you can do it is flick it that hurts my finger though I'd rather just tap it and I want different sizes I want big splotches and little splotches and what it's doing is nicely making a mess which is what we want. We want these splotches to be in different different ways. Now it looks a little bit light now, but once we get it onto the Highland Heather, Heather that will change. So is that enough? I'm flicking some of it up. There we go. Okay, so I have a bit of a concentration in the center over here. That's fine, doesn't matter. I'm gonna pour the excess back into my bottle and set that aside. Like I said, I keep one of these just for working with alcohol so that it I know I don't mix it up with the water one. All right, there is my splattering job. And it's dry, like so fast. 
So now I'm going to add to the back of it, you didn't see me do that well, but I flipped it over, and I'm going to take my adhesive sheet, which is slightly smaller than three and three quarters by five by design. Like, and when I, by that I mean like a sixteenth or a thirty-second of an inch. And I'm going to put it on here. And peel the next layer off and push that down. I'm trying to get away from having <laughs> bubbles, <laughs> so to speak, on this one, on this, this part of it. Come on, you. And then I put this down here. And this is where your bone folder comes in handy. You can just press it like that. And then that puts your adhesive onto your vellum layer without any showing at all. It's like magic. And then we're going to take the Highland Heather. We're going to stick it down on top of the card base because I actually had this somewhat framed because I wanted a little bit more of the dark of the Highland Heather to show through. Look at how that looks. All right. So we're going to peel off the backing. Let's get our Highland Heather close at hand. Peel off the, the, the backing sheet. Another reason for putting using your bone folder is to help push down the adhesive onto your vellum. That makes sense? We're going to peel the backing off. That piece is garbage. And then this is going to go down on top. And it's a layer, so we've got a little bit of a border showing around. There we go. And then once again with my bone folder, go ahead and add that to there. And there we go. There's our layer with our splotches on it. So a little bit different than the ones I did here. Just a little, little bit different. And then this is going to go down on top of the card base. Oh, <laughs> I'm using something. Forgotten about that. Something I had used the back of for another card that didn't kind of turn out. So I'm just reusing a piece of cardstock. Okay, so, whoops, hello, there's a bit of stickiness on here. We'll put this down here, and then we'll decorate it up. Pretty simple from there, but wouldn't that look lovely in blues and yellows and reds and pinks even? So you're not even um, confined to doing one color scheme. You, it doesn't even have to be the same shades. You could add different rainbow colors, per, for example. All right, we're going to do some stamping. So we have the label, which I've already die cut with stylish shapes. And I will grab my ink pad. I think this one I'll do Highland Heather. And I'm using a sea of thanks because that just kind of really goes with fish, right? Stick this here. Try to get this somewhat centered. I cut two just in case I didn't get a good stamping, but look at that. It's centered. It's pretty darn good. I'm happy with that. Tuck that away. Uh, oh, I'm not going to close this. Oh, right. The other fish I did with, um, I grabbed the wrong inks, but that's fine. I'm going to do the little fish in Highland Heather on this one. So that's what my piece here was for. And I just love this punch. It has two fish on it with their little fins. So I can probably, um, to save cutting in by trying to do this down here, I'm actually going to cut this piece of paper a little bit so I don't waste a lot. I could use my paper trimmer, but this way when I stick it in, I'm not going to waste a whole bunch. And I should be able to get two of these small fish. Now these fish are interesting. They're set up so they can go either way, the where the eye is. They're like centered or symmetrical. One, two. So I can, because the way the fins are set up, I could put them this way or I could put them this way. Brilliant. Let's get this guy in here, punch him out. So with our punches, once you see it in the window, give it a squeeze. Watch pieces fly around. Wonder where the one you were using went to, because that happens. Uh, get another one going here. All right, so that is the first one. Oh, he landed on my lap. There we go. So I got my two fish here. 
and then I'm going to do the pink, the fresh freesia one here. Hi, Glenda. Ah, yes, it's a kind of a neat trick with some rubbing alcohol and Stampin' Blends. Okay. Now we're going to do the larger fish. And just to make my life easier, I'm going to try to line it up. So again, I don't waste a lot of paper. I'm going to stamp him near the bottom because I know when I stick him into the punch, I'm only going to have to go down so far. These fish really uh, spoke to me when I saw them in the catalog because my family loves to swim. They're little fish. My, my boys and my daughter and my now grandson, we got to go fishing, to, swimming rather, together last Friday when they came to visit, which was loads of fun. Okay, everything's getting popped up on dimensionals. How? Because we can, because we like it. So I'm going to use some minis just to make it easy on me. And they happen to be handy. I keep a package of mini and the regular dimensionals on the go at any given time. I just feel like some things need one kind and another needs another kind. Alright, so I'm going to put my greeting down near the bottom. That's That dimensional is not very sticky on one side, so let's replace it. And you know what you can do, too, if you really want to pop something up? You can take a second dimensional, line it up, and stick it, and it would be even that much higher. Sometimes that's kind of a fun thing to do, especially if you're not going to mail it. When you're going to mail it, well, you want to think about how that's going to go through the mail if it's just going to end up getting squished. All right, so let's put our smaller fish the same way I have them here going this way but see you can put them either way the way the eye lands I just thought that was kind of neat very very forward thinking for using this set they're just cute and then this guy going here I mean you could have them hanging this way too but there's these guys are just swimming they're not uh, caught fish yet I don't know what kind of fish these are but I have fish in my aquarium I don't have them this way not this big and then I'm going to put some bubbles up here because I'm madly wanting to use my pastel pearls I have a lot of them I still have a lot of them and they've been in the catalog a couple of years I'm thinking they may be on their way out so it's good to use them up then I can have room in my tray here where I keep them to buy other ones oops that's the way we roll we want to use our stuff I don't want to just word it all. Got to use it up. I'm kind of doing this in a little, oh, I see I didn't do the same kind of arc that I did on the other one. Here we go. All right, and last but not least is my leftover bit of this ribbon. So this is metallic woven ribbon and it's in the Orchid Oasis. And I'm going to do just a quick little bow here and add some a glue dot and that'll hold it in place. And that'll be a wrap for me tonight. Hope you like this. I hope you like this idea and give it a try. It's pretty fun. I just like doing techniques and different things. And I like to bring them to you so you can give them a try too. And know that when you join me on a What's Up Wednesday, you're likely to get some kind of card layout or fun fold or technique for What's Up Wednesday. All right, there we go. There's my two cards. Two different, kind of two different ways, mostly the same. What a beautiful rainbow kind of look to this. All right, let me know how it goes for you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Oh, before I go, though, I meant to, I was said at the top that I was going to show you the cards I made with my sorority sisters last night. And I can't remember if I showed these to you the other week because I did the same cards with a group at work. But anyway, if I have, here you go. You get to see them again. This beautiful color here is Sweet Sorbet. And it goes gorgeous with the green, two green, soft succulent and 
evening evergreen. So we did this beautiful birthday card with a little bit of embossing. They tied some ribbons. There's a little pearl, a little bit of pearls on there. And then we also made this, love this it's very simple layout. And I like to have a little focal point here. I changed that up and took a little license with our ladybug with having the Calypso coral for wings and nice quick greeting. And how we got this to land in the same spot on everybody's card was we used the Stamparatus. And that was great for these beginner stampers. And then I always give them a calendar each year. This year I made them make their own. How was that? So this is my quick and easy design. It uses half a sheet of cardstock and uh, some patterned paper and then just a little embellishment of some kind and then these little 2023 mini calendars. And it sits on your desk or as I've told them, they could cut the back off, put a magnet on it and stick it on the fridge if they so desire. So that's the projects we did. Anyway, back to this is a wrap for me. I will wish you all well and see you next week. Bye for now.